a troop of warriors marched through the great shopping street. Some of the soldiers at the rear of the force caught a glimpse of some trickery in the street. A man entered a Paxan shop and brought a basket full of ADIR Asha and distributed it to other players. Then, when the empty basket was tipped over the shopkeeper's head, the soldiers and the passers-by burst out laughing, ha 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 ha. Another warrior snatched a basket of flowers from the hand of an old woman who met him on the way. Does it rain? While watering all the flowers. He said. The soldiers jumped and laughed as they tried to catch the flowers he threw. Another warrior stopped an oncoming bullock cart, unlocked the lock from the bullock cart and chased it away. The car rushed into the crowd and chased some people away. Van Dye the Van, who was watching all this, thought, Aha! These people are also playing like the players of Palyavatere are. Their game is a reaction to others. Fortunately, we stood aside so that their eyes did not fall on us. Otherwise, there would have been a fight. The matter would have gone bad. But he noticed only one difference. The people here did not so much dislike the games of the Vilakara soldiers. The people laughed and cheered in their calm alum. When Van Dye the Van looked back to ask about this, he did not see the boy standing with the flower pots. In the crowd and commotion, the boy has gone somewhere. Maybe going to see his work. Van Diadeva learned that after the Vilakara force left the fort in the evening, no one else was allowed inside. Members of the royal family, ministers, and Dandanayaks are the only people who have the right to enter the fort at any time of the day or night. Van Diathevan came to know that the families of the cultivators also have the same right. Therefore, his intention to enter the fort at night has changed. Van Diathevan didn't want to test the key by showing the ring. It is better to stay outside the fort at night and look around the city and enter the fort after sunrise tomorrow. Is it not impossible to visit the king and give straw even if he enters the fort at night? Van Diathevan walked slowly through the streets around the fort wall looking amused. His horse was very tired after traveling many miles that day. It needs to be put to rest soon. Otherwise, when the need arises tomorrow, this horse will be useless. Need to find a place to stay comfortably soon. Tanjapurai was a new and expanding city at that time. Especially in the evening, hundreds of street lamps had been lit and began to shine. The streets are full of people chanting J, J. People who had come from other places on various errands were going around. Among them were people from Chola towns and villages. People from the newly conquered countries of the Chola Empire were also seen. Many people had come to the capital from countries stretching from the Porana River to the Balatangarai and from the lower coast to the western coast. People from the north of the Vindhya Hills and people from across the sea appeared here and there on the streets of Amanagar. Shops selling a them. Atharasam and other snacks were swarming like flies and buying sweets. There were mountains of bananas and other fruits. Not to mention flower shops. Mullen, Malika, Thiruathai, and Chinpag were seen like the hills of Pushpak. Around the mountains of flowers the ladies crawled like beetles. When he went near the Pushpak shops, Van Diathevan thought of the young man with flowers. How comforting it would be to see him again. Is it not possible to ask him somewhere so that he can stay comfortably in this city? While thinking like this, Van Diathevan saw the young man coming from a short distance away. He dismounted and approached him. Brother. Let's find one of the flowers where is the flower? Is it sold? He said. I didn't bring flowers to sell. I brought flowers for Temple Puja, the flowers have been given away, I am going back home. Which temple are you doing this pushpak handing? Have you heard of Talakulam Temple? Oko. I have heard that Tanjore was destroyed. It looks like that temple, is it a big temple? No, it is a small temple. Durga Yaman Temple has the most glory in this area for a while. Puja, Pongal and Bali festivals are held there. The royal family and the royal family go to the Durga Yaman Temple. The Talakul Tatar temple is not so famous, people do not come to see that much. Are you doing this pushpak handiwork? 
Is there any reward for this? Our family has a grant for this. From the time of my father, there is a grant from Emperor Kandaratathai. At present, my mother and I are doing this work. Talakuladhar temple is brick work? Or have they done black stone work? Vallavarayan asked. On his way, he saw that many brick temples were being repaired, so he asked this. Now it is a brick temple, the question is that the black stone repair work will start soon. The old Pratiyar wants this repair work to be done immediately, but... said the young man hesitantly. But what? What's the use of telling all that I've heard from the barbarians? I've been told to look away and talk during the day, and not at night either. This is the meeting place of the crossroads, people around us. Standing in a place like this, we can boldly speak any secret. Our speech will not fall on anyone's ears in this crowd and noise. What's the secret to talking? Said the boy, looking at Vandiyathevan a little suspiciously. Aha! This child is very intelligent. There is profit in making friends with him. Learn more. But let him not create any doubt in his mind, thus Vandiyadeva thought, yes, what is the secret? Nothing. Let me go, brother. I must sleep peacefully somewhere for the night. I am very tired after traveling so far. Where can I stay? Guide me to a good inn and help me. Can you? He asked. What lack of places to stay in this city? There are many inns, there are also royal inns for visitors from foreign lands. But if you like. Brother. What's your name? Vandiyathevan asked. Amudan, sent an Amudan. Wow! What a nice name! My tongue is watering just hearing it. Did you start telling me that I can come and stay at your house if I like? Yeah, how did you know that? I have a magic trick, so I know. Where is your house? Amuthan said, Our garden is just a call away beyond the city limits, our house is inside the garden. A.G.A. Then I will come to your house. I cannot spend the night in this town. And I want to visit Uttamai who has a son as good as you. The mother who bore me was good, but wicked. Damn it! Why do you say that? Perhaps your father. My father is dead, but not only that, but my mother is born ugly. You will know when you see it, let's go. After walking for half an hour, they reached a flower garden outside the city. The sweet fragrance of night-blooming flowers gave Vandiyathevan a rare trance. There was not much noise and commotion in the streets of the city. There was a log house in the middle of the garden. There were two cottages next door. There were two families in the cottages who helped in the garden. Amuthan called one of them and told him to feed Vandiyadeva's horse and tie it under a tree. Then he took him inside the house. On seeing Amudha's mother, Vandiyathevan knew that such was her wickedness. It turned out that the old woman was mute and unable to speak. But Vandiyadeva saw that Madarasi's face was full of mercy and love. A light of keen knowledge also shone from his face. Isn't it one of the wonders of creation that people who are generally handicapped in some way can turn out to be otherwise highly intelligent? When Amuthan made some signals, the old woman came to know that the person who had come was a guest from a foreign country. She expressed her sympathy and welcome by her facial expression. After some time, the mother served the food. First came the Ediupam and sweetened coconut milk. Vandiyathevan had never drunk such a sweet treat in his life. He ate ten or twelve Ediupam and half coconut milk. Then came the leaven and the corn, Ahan saw them too. Even so, he was not hungry, at last he swallowed half a foot of rice and curd. Only then did he rise from the leaf. He learned some things by asking a mudan while eating. Apart from the Sundara Chola emperor and his courtiers, he inquired who was inside the Tanjore fort and more importantly who was who. The mansions and retinues of the great and small cultivators were there. His treasure and grain store were both inside the fort so there were officers and accountants to look after them. Anirutha Brahmarayar, a minister worthy of Sundara Chola's intimate trust and admiration, 
and Thyramandra Alainayak lived within the fort. And the soldiers guarding the fort of Tanjore under the command of Chinapalyavatare and their families stayed there. Gold and silver jewelers, Navaratna traders, Panasaris were also accommodated inside the fort. There were hundreds of officers who worked to levy taxes under the great Pulavatarir. The Durga Yaman temple was in a corner inside the fort. The temple priests, attendants, and Kangkais lived near the temple. After knowing all this, he asked, Are all the ministers in the fort at present? Vandiyathevan asked, How will everyone be? They will be coming and going outside. Anirutha Brahmariyar has not been in the city for some time. It is said that he has gone to Chera country. The great Palyavatarayar went out four days ago. It is said that he went to the middle country north of Kaladam. Maybe the one who left is back, isn't it? You never know. This evening Palyavar came to Ilay Arani's palace. I saw myself at the gate of the fort, but Palyavatarayar did not come. Perhaps he stayed somewhere on the way and may return tomorrow. Brother. Prince Madhurandhak Deva is also staying inside the castle. Yes, Madhurandhagar's mansion is next to Palyavatarayar's palace. Isn't that the son-in-law who married the daughter of the little Palyavatarayar? Oh. Is that so? I didn't know until now. Most people don't know that the wedding was not celebrated with much fanfare because of the emperor's displeasure. Good, is Madhurand Hakativar inside the castle now? He should be inside the fort, but Madhurandak Deva does not come out ordinarily. People are not able to see him. He spends most of his time in yoga, meditation, and puja, engaged in devotion to Shiva. But you are still getting married after all these days. Yes, that is a little strange thing. They say that the bridegroom's mind has changed after the wedding. What should we do about it? It is better not to talk too much. Vandiyathevan was eager to know more things from Santhanamuthan. But he didn't want to arouse suspicion by asking too much. The friendship of such a child will be of great help to him. He got lucky when he found a house like this in Tanjore. Shall I spoil it all? Also, the fatigue of the long journey was accompanied by sleepiness on the first night. I rolled my eyes and fell asleep. Sendan Amuthan found out about his condition and put him to bed soon. Finally, in his sleep, Vandiyadeva's mind came to the face of Ila Iarani of Pavur. Dad! What a beauty! What brilliance! When he suddenly saw that magical form, he became completely stunned and stunned, reminding him of another experience. When he was a child, he was walking through the forest when suddenly a snake appeared in front of him. Its beauty is beauty. Charm is charm. Vandiyadeva could never take his eyes off the image of the snake, couldn't even blink. He stood as he saw what he saw, the snake was swinging. When the snake swayed, his body swayed accordingly, no one knows what the result would have been. Suddenly a lizard came and jumped on the snake. Both started a war. Taking advantage of that opportunity, Vandiyadevan came running in one run. See you. What an example. What is the comparison of the snake that shot Sundarangi, the goddess of beauty? Even if you see her milky face once, your hunger will be satisfied. What sweetness in her voice. She is a rare beauty. But that other woman who saw the child fortune teller in the house and on the beach of Arizala. Her face also glowed. The beauty is gone. Both faces are beautiful faces, but what a difference between them. In it majesty and magnanimity, enchantment and attractiveness in this. While his mind was comparing the faces of the two monks, another monk came and interrupted. Nathredavi, the dictatorial tyrant queen, completely conquered Vandiyadeva.